On this episode of O'Fallon Matters, stay safe during severe weather events. Then, learn how you can give Pass back to O'Fallon's youth by clicking. Finally, find out why O'Fallon is one of the most livable small cities in America. All this and more next on O'Fallon Matters. It's the mission of this department to serve our residents and make their way of life easier. Today on O'Fallon Matters, we're going to learn how engineering improves our infrastructure and reduces congestion throughout the city. O'Fallon is a bustling city of over 90,000 residents. And safe road networks, traffic management, engineering, and clean stormwater just don't happen. They're the result of detailed coordination and sound engineering. And it takes a team of talented individuals to make this happen. Yes. A lot of our projects do affect public roads, public sewers, so we are providing and making sure that that infrastructure that is built, that we are to maintain, is built properly. So that those citizens have, have nice infrastructure to, uh, to utilize you know, 20, 30, 40 years into the future. The roadways are a very complex thing that are designed with multiple parts that interact with each other. So if somebody says to me, can you just change the signal timing for this one signal on Highway K? What you don't always see is that that can have a lot of ripple effects for the entire corridor. So the timing of those signals depend on other signals, it depends on pedestrian infrastructure, it depends on so many different things that have all these very complex interactions. And so simple requests are not always so simple once you get past the surface of it. There's so many uh, competing interests, I guess, and, and not so much money uh, to complete all those tasks. So, you know, the city has seen tremendous growth and with that comes uh, um, you know, congestion and, and impacts to the residents and, and paths and sidewalks and roadways and, and stormwater concerns and, and trying to determine what takes priority and, and then really it comes down to, you know, what funding you have available to, to help solve those problems. Our group works very hard. We secure anywhere from five to six million dollars a year in outside funds that uh, allows us to complete a lot more projects. Did you know that there are over 20 staff members in the engineering department? and each team member provides a vital function within the department. The engineering department's responsible for uh, uh, basically any project that the city does or any major projects regarding stormwater or roadways or creeks. Um, any new development that comes in, be it a residential or commercial, uh, we also uh, do the plan reviews on those and then uh, we have a group of construction inspectors that will uh, in turn inspect any uh, type of project we do or commercial or residential development that comes in. Uh, we also have a stormwater group. Um, they're pre pretty much the first one that's called when there is a stormwater concern. They'll go out and do the initial assessment and then we'll determine, you know, is that something for our maintenance crew or is, or is it private or is it a, a project we might need to look into in the future. And then we also have our traffic department which uh, handles any kind of, uh, you know, traffic concern studies, investigating those as well as uh, maintaining our 34 signals uh, throughout the city. Several members of the engineering department have worked for the city for over 15 years. In fact, O'Fallon's traffic signal technician is the longest tenured city employee with over 30 years of experience. This team has been known to put in extra hours, work in the middle of the night to plow snow, or respond to a signal malfunction, all with the goal of serving the public as best they can. When I first started, there was like 10,000, less than 10,000 people, now it's over 90,000. I enjoy working on the signals, so I've been doing this for 30 years. When I first started, there was only three departments, water, parks, and streets, and there was only 10 people here. So why do I like coming? I enjoy taking care of the residents. I mean, I get some calls about the signals. I enjoy working on them. It's the satisfaction of fixing them and keeping people happy. I like the idea that I get to be out in the environment as well. Um, good days and bad days, rain days, snow days, and warm days. Um, it's beautiful, obviously. Um, and to be able to help the residents with a drainage issue and solve a problem that they have um, that can help them out, things they didn't understand that makes them understand better. We get out and clean the trash out of the creeks and the streams, so we protect all the ecology of, and the environment of the stream as well as manage flooding. 
Um, so ultimately, even though there's lots of challenges, there's not a day that doesn't go by that you don't get a different puzzle to solve, and that's the best part about it. Being able to use um, reasoning, logic, you know, to come out and solve problems, help people with things, being in the field, um, you know, it, it really is, it's a great job. And you get to work for the city. I grew up in this city, I love this city. So everything about being able to make this city better is just something that totally speaks to me and it really is a dream job. Project management and engineering is a never ending endeavor. O'Fallon continues to grow and some projects take years to complete. This dynamic group was directly involved in the management of O'Fallon's Justice Center, O'Day Park, and Phase 1 of the I-70 Corridor Project. But sometimes, it's the little projects that go unnoticed. We had a, a lady that was handicapped and, and uh, she uses a remote uh, um, wheelchair to get to uh, uh, shops on um, Highway K and, and she uses uh, Mexico Road to access those. Well, the sidewalks uh, really weren't accommodating, so um, we were able to uh, to check around and, and secure some outside funds uh, that allowed us to do an in-house design and improve some uh, uh, some intersections to, to add that ADA so that now she could access. So um, although it wasn't a huge project, it was done uh, uh, relatively quickly, let's say within a year. It, it, it means a lot and you know when you, when you see her on the path or the sidewalk, you know getting to those uh, maybe a restaurant or a store she wants to visit, it, it means a lot. So. This department's work is all about building a stronger community, and the engineering department's entire team was honored for their work. The American Public Works Association named the I-70 Corridor Project as its Project of the Year Award in Transportation. The award recognized our project managers, contractors, and everyone involved for their excellence in managing this project through to completion. The engineering department is truly the backbone of the city. It's good to know that the future of O'Fallon's infrastructure is in their hands. With sports leagues getting back in the game, the kids who play on our sports teams need coaches now more than ever. If you love sports and have ever thought about coaching, there are scores of future stars waiting for your help. Coaching is such a fun way to give back to your community. You don't need to be an ex-pro, however. All you need to do is just share your love for your sport. We've all been cooped up for the past year, um, so this is a great time to get out uh, with your kids, sign up for a league, and volunteer to coach. We're always looking for coaches for our soccer league, t-ball and coach pitch leagues, and our volleyball league. It is an absolute blast. I love watching these boys. Like, they get so into it. They get competitive. I mean, I'm a little competitive, so it's fun to watch these boys get super competitive and just really learn and start developing on like their skills. So it's fun to watch these boys just grow and just have a blast with it out there. I mean, these boys are just a, such a tight knit group of kids too, that they're all turning into like the best group of friends. Baseball's been a huge part of my life. Um, and so now that I have my own son and I can start to pass this on to him and, and all these kids at this age, it's just, uh, it's just so cool. It's kind of surreal to, to be on the other side of things now. Just to pass on my, my knowledge of the game and, and my passion and love for the game and hope that that will keep them interested in it for the rest of their lives. And you won't be alone. Local coaches like ex-pro Jamie Swanner and your team's parents will be eager to help if you ask. We have people who can help with practice or drills for any of our sports that we need coaches for. You know, I didn't think I could do it, to be quite honest. I played, but I didn't play competitively. You know, I just played CYC when I was growing up. But I'm giving these kids enough to want to just have fun and come out here and play. My thought was, why should these kids get punished because no one will step up to coach? It's better than sitting on the couch, right? Luckily, YouTube's fantastic and gives you lots of ideas. Ezra and Jamie, who are also in the soccer program, are there to give you lots of other suggestions or helpful tips or tools. All you have to do is reach out. Especially at this age, um, I mean, sometimes it's like herding cats, uh, but that's part of the fun of it. Um, they're just out there loving, hanging out with their friends, um, you know, learning just to put the bat on the ball, feel what it's like to catch a ball for the first time, to see what it's like to throw. And let's be honest, the you know, mechanics don't have to be super sound at this age. But we have some awesome parents that um, they just jump in 
and they want to help the kids too. I don't feel like I've been in this alone at all. I'll have a parent reach out to coach their child's team just to get them to play and then they'll continue to keep coaching throughout the years. So once they commit to one season, they generally will stick with it and coach a child's team for a number of years. This will be my seventh season. I started in U4 and now my boys are in U8. And I've watched these kids grow because some of them I've had since the very beginning. And now I think I'm more obsessed with it than they are just because it's turned into something that's been so fun. I look forward to it. I enjoy it. It's kind of my little outlet. It's kind of a way back to give to these kids so they have you know a way to enjoy because I think sometimes everything is so oh you got to play this or you got to play this or you got to play this some kids just want to try it all out so much fun just to watch them interact with each other kids cheering each other on seeing the kids being surprised at themselves and what they're able to do um, it's just fun to watch and to see like oh hey wow I can do this and you get to see their confidence just build up especially when they hit the ball for the first time and oh my gosh that ball popped off the bat and that was me you know and it, it's, it's awesome to see that. A volunteer coach gets a discounted rate um, off their child's registrations and then they also get to pick their roster so if they have other friends that they want their child to play with they get to choose them as well. If you'd like to coach for any of our leagues call up to the Renaud Center at 636-474-2732 and let them know that you'd like to coach your child's team. That will tell them to apply the discount and they will give you any other information that you may need. Can I go in outfield next? In outfield forward? Yes, you can. I enjoy it and I wouldn't change it for the world. It's just a fun experience. Like I said, it's just fun to watch the kids, you know, enjoy being together and having fun with baseball. Kids working together as a team, that, that helps their social and emotional builds their confidence in really just being a part of something that's bigger than just them. I mean, it's the most heartwarming thing that you could do. If you'll just take the time a little bit, 30 minutes a week for practice, you know, like 30, 45 minutes, if you're willing to do that, you're going to make a difference in some of these kids' lives, whether you realize it or not. The city of O'Fallon received another national honor. Now, let's find out why O'Fallon is the number one most livable small city in America. We know O'Fallon is a great place to live, work, and play. We continuously get national accolades for safety and quality of life. And now, the financial website SmartAsset.com has named the city of O'Fallon, Missouri as one of the most livable small cities in the United States for 2021. In the study, Smart Asset compared 300 cities with populations between 65,000 and 100,000 to identify and rank 2021's most livable small cities. It's really an honor for us to receive uh, Smart Assets ranking as the most livable city in America. It really gives people an idea of what all is available here in O'Fallon, and it makes people look at our community that may not have before, and that's really great when you're going out and attracting businesses or future residents. It's businesses, it's our employees, and it's our elected officials. Uh, you know, we couldn't be the most livable city without our businesses, without the residents doing what they do, our businesses doing what they do. Everybody's very friendly, everybody's oh, no. great to get along with. Everybody says hello when you walk into a business, when you walk into a restaurant, everybody's happy. It's the small town feel that I think everybody wants to live in. Smart Asset analyzed data across several different metrics. O'Fallon landed at the top spot primarily due to its low income inequality, relatively low proportion of residents living below the poverty line, and low median household costs. Smart Asset looks at a variety of data uh, that's all publicly available, specifically related to things like crime, residents' income levels, um, the housing stock of the community, the age of the community. They really try to look at, to get a snapshot of all these pictures. There's no perfect data that says every city's, that can compare every city perfectly, but they do a really good job of taking a broad range of data and saying, hey, here's an idea of what makes a livable city. They use that, they rank it all impartially, and O'Fallon was fortunate enough to come out on top this year. Now on O'Fallon Matters, Officer Gene Delaney joins us with some tips on how to stay safe during severe spring weather. On average, roughly 47 tornadoes are spotted or touched down in Missouri annually. Mid-April through June is usually the most active period for tornadoes. 
Here are a few tips from Officer Gene Delaney on how to protect yourself and your family. Preparing for a tornado, tornado is one of those things where um, it usually there's an onset pretty quickly. Uh, you may have some warning, you may have little warning at all. The best way to prepare is to make sure that you're monitoring the weather conditions. And you can typically tell because you're going to get alerts, you're going to get things over uh, news media, over the internet, and any alert service that you may have signed up for. Plus, just the condition, the weather environment that's going on, you're going to be able to tell. If you start to see um, things like circular rotating clouds, or if you hear weather sirens, or you've been told to um, that we've reached a warning, in other words, there's a tornado warning in effect, that is when you want to seek shelter. A watch is just that conditions are favorable for the weather event to occur. A warning means that there has been a sighting or something on radar to indicate that it is impending or incoming. The best thing you can do if you're at home and there's a warning, so we're at the level now where there's a tornado warning, you want to seek shelter. If you're in a home that has a basement or a cellar, the best place to be is going to be in the basement. You want to stay away from exterior walls, windows, and doors like that. If you don't have a basement or a shelter, you want to go to the center, center of the house, um, and again, stay away from windows, exterior walls, exterior doorways, and things like that. First thing is, is that you're not going to be able to outrun the tornado. So if you're in a car or something, that don't even try that. Um, if you're in your vehicle and there is no immediate shelter to get to or no low-lying area to get to, the best thing would be to stay in your vehicle. Um, use your hands and your arms to cover and protect your head and your face. And if you have some blankets or coats or something like that to put over you. If you're out on an open highway and there's no place to go, you're better off in a vehicle than out in a field. Now, like I said, if you have a low-lying area you can get to, like a, a drainage gully or a drainage ditch or something like that, or a structure that you can get into, a solid structure, then that's better. You don't want to hide under overpasses. Overpasses can create like a wind tunnel effect, and debris gets sucked in there. There's only so many places debris, debris can go, so you don't want to go to underpasses. If your home has been damaged by a tornado um, and you're in it or returning to it, if you can see there's significant structural damage, you should have the home inspected before you go back in. Or even if it's just a minor amount of damage, you don't know how much of the actual structure has been compromised. So you want to have that checked before you start going back into the home. If you want any more information on tornadoes, you can visit O'Fallon's Emergency Management page, St. Charles County Emergency Management page, uh, the National Weather Service, uh, the FEMA webpage, or ready.gov. Next on O'Fallon Matters, we'll check in with the volunteers who are making a difference in our community. Joe Meyer has more. Thanks to O'Fallon spirited volunteers, the city can offer improved services, events, and programs. Volunteering for the city of O'Fallon is a joy and it starts with our award-winning Volunteer Services Department. Service to the community has real, measurable value and is more than spending two hours away from the house on a Saturday morning. It continues even after the volunteer shift has come to an end. And each spring, hundreds of volunteers come from all over the city to help make O'Fallon a better place to live. On a rainy morning in April, legions of volunteers help clean up our city by venturing into muddy streams in search of trash and unwanted debris. Right now we're doing our annual Mission Clean Stream, which brings out a lot of different groups who are just really interested in environmental impact. And the group that we have out today is American Heritage Girls, and they're focused on um, you know, like I said, environmental impact and getting some community service hours in to help teach the younger generation what it means to give back and to be a part of their community. As families hiked up and down O'Fallon streams, they picked up any junk they could find. It was muddy and misty, but the volunteers still had fun and even were surprised at what they pulled out of the creeks. 
so today we actually found a, a bicycle that was fully intact, which isn't something that we typically find. Um, pieces here and there maybe sure, but what's really cool about these kinds of events is you never know what you're going to find. And to see the kids come out of the creek with um, you know, a bicycle or a, a tire or, you know, something completely out of the ordinary and, and their face of just jubilation that, holy cow, look what I found. It's, it's a really great experience for them and they're doing something good by giving back to the community and keeping our creeks clean. The thousands of volunteers that come out each spring really make a difference. Their service frees up park staff so they can focus on critical needs projects love having the volunteers come out. Uh, volunteer Services does a great job supporting the Landscape Division and for example we're in the greenhouse today and we're flatting out little seedlings that have sprouted and we're putting them in a 36 count tray. It's tedious work uh, but for somebody who hasn't done it before like a lot of our volunteers it's a great way to do something new and learn something that they can possibly apply to the next item. I'm going for Life Scout and you gotta do three hours of community service, conservation of community service. So this counts for it, so I'm getting that done. You can't always have workers do everything, so you gotta help out the community. Volunteering in O'Fallon is not only rewarding, but it's fun, and signing up has never been easier. In fact, O'Fallon volunteers will tell you that their work and experiences gained as a volunteer were worth way more than any money. There are several volunteering opportunities coming up, like O'Fallon's Heritage and Freedom Fest, along with other great events. If you would like to volunteer for the city of O'Fallon, please visit us at www.ofallon.mo.us slash volunteer. The St. Charles County Veterans Museum has been known to bring tears to the eyes of veterans who visit. Let's learn more about this inspirational gem located in the heart of O'Fallon. The St. Charles County Veterans Museum is celebrating their two-year anniversary. The museum was the dream of Ralph Borelli. Part of his dream was to educate school children about the sacrifice made by our veterans. And to remind all that visit the museum that freedom is never free. And there is no doubt that Ralph's dream is now a reality. Our mission at the St. Charles County Veterans Museum is to honor our local area veterans. Um, we're not here to tell the stories of the wars. We're here to tell the stories of these individual brave people that sacrificed their lives in some cases um, or just a period of their lives for the freedoms that we take advantage of every day. So we're here to tell their stories to be the spokesman for them. In fact, the museum continues to add new exhibits that tell the stories of St. Charles County veterans who served and also those who died in service to our great nation. One of the areas that we've been able to expand on is some of the artifact donations and stories for our killed in action veterans. For example, we've got three young veterans, Andrew Rankin, uh, Keith Hipkins and Floyd Hartwick, all three of them were in the Marines and were killed uh, very shortly upon getting in Vietnam. And so we've got a really nice display on them and some of their artifacts. We also have a display for a female WAC, Women of the Army Corps, Marsha Fisher, and she joined, wanted to join the military because she wanted to be a police officer and they wouldn't hire her unless she um, had some experience. So she used the military as a way to get, gain that experience so that she could then become a police officer, which she did most of her you know, 32 years of working in her life. Once you walk through the doors of the museum, you'll be greeted with a variety of exhibits. Each exhibit features interactive ways to connect with a soldier's journey. When you come here to the museum, you can have your experience several different ways, however you want to have it. If you want to have a person, one of our local veterans or volunteers, lead you around with the tour and um, give you some of those stories orally, we can do that. Some people don't really like that. They like to just kind of mosey around on their own. And so what we've done is we put little QR codes on each of the display cases. And if you take your cell phone, you open up your camera, and you just have the camera focus on it, you don't take a picture, but just focus on it, it will actually take you to our website, stcharlescountyveteransmuseum.org, and it will pull up that person's story. And you can just read it. 
and we also have some binders that we put out with each of those people's stories and you can read that here as well. And what's in the binder is on our website. Not only can you tour the St. Charles County Veterans Museum, but you can also experience special events throughout the year. Find out more about all the special events that take place at St. Charles County Veterans Museum org. And finally, the museum is open Thursday and Friday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Thanks for joining us today. If you have a good story idea, let us know. Email us at O'FallonTV at O'Fallon.mo.us. And remember to give back to your community because O'Fallon matters to us all.